Let the hate flow through you. Yes, it's time for your worst movies of 2019, which you've been voting for for the past few weeks. And ooh, a lot of you weaponized this vote, boy, but that's okay. That's the way things are these days. And if you're able to mobilize, well, hey, you mobilized. And not only did some of you manage to mobilize for this list, but you mobilized at the box office as well. Although in some cases, some of the movies that you were against survived, if not thrived, despite making serious enemies amongst you. All right, ready? Number 10, Men in Black International. Yeah, this one makes sense, even though we do love Thor and Valkyrie. But do we? Because both of them, particularly Chris Hemsworth, suffer struggle at the box office outside of the MCU. Thank goodness they're both going to be in Thor 4, so it's all good. Uh, Kevin Feige didn't need to punish them for making Thor light for Sony because you punished them. Uh, it never looks good to have this kind of flop on your resume, particularly, unfortunately, for Tessa Thompson, who stepped up to a lead in a blockbuster. It's, um, that's where I think it's a little bit unfortunate, particularly because I thought she, did, she was very good uh, in the role. But I have to say, you can't take two people and put, I hope it wasn't because she was a woman, guys, because she was great. But anyway, you can't take two people, put them in suits, toss them in with a bunch of aliens, and call it, just call it Men in Black. You're still mess missing the special sauce. And is this is the special sauce Will Smith? Uh, even Smith is having uh, a bit of a, a problem at the box office outside of, of course, Aladdin, the biggest hit of his career. But he's not, he's not in the clear, I think. He hasn't fully come back. Uh, Jurassic Park was able to find a new leading man, so maybe Sony can too for Men in Black. Uh, what do you think they should be looking for? Because clearly Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson weren't it. I don't know if they even could have been, maybe with a little bit better material. I thought the film was okay, but it was weak. It was weak. And it is only your number 10. All right, number nine, Terminator Dark Fate. I thought it would have been higher up on this list, but you guys have a lot of hate for some movies. <laughs> All right, so, and Terminator Dark Fate, so that put, you know, ended up benefiting that movie. Uh, this was not the T2 redux that many fans have been looking for and hoping for, and the one that was promised them by James Cameron. Promised! But instead, you know, forget just being a, 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 as good as T2. This film, this uh, new entry, aggressively nullified the fan favorite uh, in a move revealed to be Cameron's own idea. He was supposed to be the savior. For decades, people were like, if only Cameron would come back. Well, look what happened. It's horrible. It's like he's, he can go talk to George Lucas about people who don't get their own material. How does that happen? Uh, I think sometimes people, you know, I, I think acting wise, I would put, well, we'll see how Birds of Prey turns out, but I would put Johnny Depp and Margot Robbie in that list as well. That's why, you you know, it takes a village. That's why, you know, Hollywood is a team sport. Uh, sometimes to share the blame because we're on a worse list, but sometimes to raise everything up and to, to watch each other's backs. Uh, anyway, uh, this movie also delivered a rebooted Terminator story which was a watered-down version of the story it was rebooting. What? It's like Skynet by another name? Why? It's not even as good a name. I don't even remember it, actually. Why would you? Legion, I think, right? Why would you keep Skynet? That's a great name. Uh, and it's not like you lost the rights to it or something. You could still use that if you wanted to. And why wouldn't you want to? All right, I, I, I mean, go look at my spoiler review for Terminator Dark Fate. So many ways this could have worked out if you had a T-800 wandering around. That could have fixed a lot of things. It knows what Skynet is. All right, so anyway, also, like Star Wars, talk about annoying people, uh, this new Terminator movie uh, made the same mistake of trying to reunite its original cast while also introducing a slew, not just one, not just two, but a slew of new characters. You gotta pick a lane. Uh, not to mention, action director extraordinaire Tim Miller inexplicably delivered very little action. As I've said in my trailer reactions, what did you think we hired you for, Tim? Apparently it was to have arguments with James Cameron in the editing room. Now, Star Wars still managed to thrive at the box office because fans still have an emotional connection to that franchise. But I think it's pretty clear the same can't be said, at this point at least, of Terminator. Uh, also, Terminator was never big with the toys. Terminator, Terminator, Terminator 2 and Terminator 1 were great films, uh, iconic films. But it's a little like the Die Hard situation, which is also very sad. Um, in that they weren't like a part of people's lives like Star Wars was. All right, number eight, 
Brightburn. You didn't like it either. All right, so I'll, I'll reveal a little bit as to why I didn't like it in just a moment. So Jay, I, I even refused to review this movie. All right, so James Gunn recently revealed that Warner Brothers said he could do any DC movie he wanted. That's how much they wanted him over there. But he's only going to visit because then he's going back to the MCU. But they, he said they even offered him a Superman movie. But thank goodness he picked Suicide Squad, a much better match with his sensibilities than Superman clearly turned out to be. Now, I'm sure some of you are furiously typing, James Gunn didn't direct Brightburn, but he produced it, and it's written by his brother and cousin, who, if he had any sense, would have he would have told them, you're making a mistake. So, toxic male is a popular term these days, but it's often misapplied. However, here, I think it absolutely fits. Uh, Brightburn celebrates misogynistic behavior, and while some men do meet a grisly fate in the film, usually for defending, siding with, or protecting a woman, this super-powered little boy specializes in torturing and then killing any female characters who don't do what he wants. It's just horrible. Torture porn with no deeper meaning or exploration of the Superman mythology. I totally agree with you that Brightburn is one of the worst movies of the year. All right, number seven, The Lion King. I agree with you on this one as well. See, The Lion King isn't so much a bad film itself, and it can't be because it's a shot-for-shot -shot remake of a fabulous movie, which is exactly the problem. That's why it's on this list. None of the people who made the animated The Lion King get any credit or financial participation in what's basically the CGI version of that exact same movie. And that underscores the dirty secret of live action remakes. The animation industry, it turns out, has no protection for its talent, and Disney is taking advantage of that. Usually if you remake a movie, you owe some people who made the first movie some money and some credit, but you do not with animated movies. Disney owns them outright in full. And also, at least Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin added some new elements so the new people can claim some ownership that they've added something to the film. Uh, but this is the same damn movie, minus the color and facial expressions. Uh, it made a billion dollars, though, so, you know, I'm, Disney's not that sad. All right, number six, although just think how much money that everybody who was with that first movie was cheated out of. Also, animation doesn't really protect profit sharing either, so they don't make any money off the first movie. Uh, all right. Number six, Hellboy. Poor David Harbour. This one wasn't his fault. I thought he was pretty good in the role. And thank goodness he's already moved on to the MCU. And of course, Stranger Things season four. He can't confirm if he's in it, but of course he's in it. And interestingly, both are Russian themed, but talk about a red scare. Now to be fair, I think this movie had its moments and it felt, I think it would have done well as a streaming show because its script was kind of meandering. <laughs> But the real problem, without a doubt, is that this movie is so similar yet inferior to the Guillermo del Toro original films, there is no reason for it to exist, except as an insult, insult to the fans of those films and Guillermo del Toro. Remember when Mike Mignola, who of course created Hellboy, was like, this is going to be the most comic book accurate version yet? What the heck happened? Well, it seems that Kevin Sujihara's girlfriend happened as she lured away director Neil Marshall. She was upset that he couldn't, he was upset too that he couldn't cast her as the star, the female star of the movie. And then halfway through, she lured him away to focus on building her own career. It's not going so well, shocker. Now both their careers are ruined. Well, she never had one. Uh, Lionsgate had a great 2019 overall, and I'm sure they're eager to leave this type of failure behind. Number five, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Worse than Brightburn, Hellboy, and Terminator Dark Fate? Come on. Well, I guess an angrier fan base, that's for sure. Yes, speaking of insulting to fans, Disney's trilogy is unbelievably sloppy. But thankfully, I think we have to be fair here. It features, I'm trying to counteract some of the hate here. Uh, it features some excellent actors who I think do a nice job and who might be remembered fondly despite the quality of their trilogy, like Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan, right? I do agree, though, that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker deserves to be on the 2019 worst list, but I would just barely put it on at number 10. Not just for the film itself, but I think you also have to factor in the lost opportunity. I mean, six films later and the original trilogy is still the best? That's ridiculous. Even Jurassic, again, Jurassic Park managed to turn things around. And really only got one good film off the ground to begin with. Um, 
I really like the new Jurassic films. And I think, you know, you know, Disney, you know, George Lucas only has himself to blame and he got too, you know, into his own head and he didn't have enough people balancing him out. But Disney really has no excuse, especially considering how successful their other verticals are. But thankfully, the future of Star Wars looks bright and adorable. Number four, Charlie's Angels. Aw, you guys, this movie is actually pretty good, and I suspect that many of you who voted for it didn't even see it. But, I have to be fair in both directions, this underscores the problem facing Elizabeth Banks and Kristen Stewart, that mainstream audiences do not like them. But Stewart has a strong career in indie films already, and that's not going to go anywhere, and she's not giving up on blockbusters either, while Banks has already landed on her feet over at Universal as their new invisible woman. Oh, come on, Hollywood, don't you ever learn? I mean, clearly audiences have no problem with strong female characters, but overt, aggressive girl power messages that tear down guys, right? Even if it's done in a humorous, winky way. That's a different story. I don't know why Hollywood's continuing with this. It's obviously not appreciated by anyone. All right, so, I mean, and I think it's just giving, you know, it's creating a lot of problems for everybody on both sides. And so I think that it's not, I mean, there's, it's the pendulum effect. And clearly it's time for the pendulum to swing back towards more towards the middle. And a lot of people in Hollywood just aren't listening. Uh, Hollywood movies are not social media. Okay, so, and on that note, fittingly, number three is Captain Marvel. This movie is not that bad. In fact, it's pretty good and gets better with each time that you see it. I've seen it three times now and I appreciate it more each time. Uh, and many people have seen it. In fact, it made over a billion dollars and is the first comic book movie starring a woman to ever do so. Uh, some feel it was this very hate that allowed the film to do so well, uh, to get people interested in Captain Marvel, a.k.a. buy a ticket, both to combat the hate and also simply to see what all the fuss was about. But let's be honest, you didn't put Captain Marvel on here for the movie, but for the actress playing the lead role, Ms. Brie Larson. Now, Brie Larson has a legion of supporters, especially on social media. Uh, and social media, I think, can make certain movements seem bigger than they actually are on both sides of the fence. But she does make, I think, not only aggressive comments, but often needlessly aggressive comments. I think she's trying to drum up support, and I think she's not a... She's not careful about the enemies that she might drum up in the same situation. Uh, and she's already campaigning to be in Disney's Star Wars franchise, despite just having joined Marvel's franchise. Sure, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, but sometimes the squeaks are so loud and uncomfortable and downright painful that the wheel just gets replaced. Uh, I don't think Brie Larson's going anywhere in the MCU, but at the same time, I don't see Captain Marvel 2 being fast-tracked either. But there's hope. I think that with the right director, or in this case, directors, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel could come across quite well. I think everyone liked her in Avengers Endgame. I think the Russo brothers, once again, just like they did with Black Widow, were very good with a, with a female character. So I think that Captain Marvel can live on and live on successfully. But I'm just hoping that Kevin Feige and Brie Larson herself are paying attention to some of the feathers they're ruffling. I'm not saying they need to totally go in the other direction or stop what they're doing, but it's always better to get along with as many people as possible. And I hope that's, I'm sure Kevin Feige's keeping that in mind, and I hope Brie Larson is as well. She doesn't want to become the new Jessica Chastain. All right, number two, Dark Phoenix. Now, your dislike for this movie, I think, has nothing to do with its female characters. Although a few of you took issue with Mystique's, some would say, infamous line in the movie. But come on, in the context of the film, she was totally right. Plus, I think this, that, that, um, that, that uh, being upset with that line also had to do with the fact that, like Brie Larson, Jennifer Lawrence has angered many fans with her attitude. In this case, her apathy and sometimes disdain for a beloved character and franchise. A character a number of actresses would love to be, in which Jennifer Lawrence really can't wait to seem to get out. But then she won't leave. She's like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I'm back. And you're like, well, nobody wants you to do it either. Uh, but the X-Men have always had the best female characters, and I think many fans, including myself, were very happy with what Sophie Turner did with the Jean Grey role. The problem was the script and the directing. Sweet vindication for Josh Trank, as Fox let the man who destroyed Trank's third act have his own film. Yes, sometimes the company man is just that, and not the artist he fancies himself to be, resulting in Fox botching one of the greatest comic book stories of all time, twice. And uh, I mean, as a result, and I guess this is a bit of a silver lining, while Fox's X-Men were once fan favorites, we're now desperate for Feige's X-Men. 
And then your 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 number one worst movie of the year, of course, is Cats, which I think many of you didn't see as well. But for the most part, the trailer was enough. And if it wasn't enough to help you make up your mind, there was the Rotten Tomatoes score, the cinema score, Universal rushing out a better version of the movie just days after its release. Tom Hooper and the VFX team playing the blame game, aggressively so. Evan Rachel Wood tearing the film apart. James Corden, who is in the movie, doing the same. Uh, and it being DOA box office wise. Yes, Cats will go down as the water world of musicals. And hey, Kevin Costner still works, but director Kevin Reynolds does not. He was very, he was, he did um, Robin Hood with Kevin Costner. He was flying high, just as Tom Hooper was. But uh, Ryan, uh, Ron Reynolds never Never really uh, recovered. Although I thought Hatfields and McCoys was quite good. And I'm glad Kevin Costner continued to work with them. We have yet to see what the fallout from Cats will be, but even for those of us willing to give Cats the benefit of the doubt, I think no one can deny its overall failure. It's just, as I said, I think the water world of musicals is an apt description. So those are your worst movies of 2019. I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos, including your best list right now.